If you're looking at taking better action shots, the next 10 minutes may give you some good tips. Whether you shoot Canon, Nikon, or have third-party lenses, this isn't a comparison. There's some tips that apply to both uh, types of equipment. Main thing you're going to need, a digital SLR. Most important part of that digital SLR is something with a low shutter lag time. When you hit the shutter release, you want that exposure to be taken. You're going to want control over um, shutter priority, aperture priority, full manual modes, and even things like metering control, focus control, and of course, uh, good frames per second if you'd like to shoot pictures in rapid successions. I, I see somewhere around four frames per second is probably the minimum. Uh, most cameras are a little bit higher than that these days. Uh, I personally shoot with a uh, Canon 7D. It is uh, 8 frames a second, uh, very, very fast, great uh, shutter lag time at 59 milliseconds. Uh, depending on your budget, you can get something a little bit faster or a little bit, uh, a little bit slower. Uh, Nikon makes fine, fast cameras as well, so don't fret if you uh, don't have the brands that I have listed here. When it comes to lenses, there's really a couple different uh, um, schools of thought, if you will. Uh, there's if you're shooting sort of low light, uh, or, or bright light. Uh, low light meaning outdoor football games at night or indoor basketball games. You're going to need some pretty fast lenses for that. If you're shooting uh, full uh, outdoor, um, you can get by with uh, slower lenses, some of the consumer grade lenses, but uh, there's some ideal focal lengths that are listed on the screen there. Uh, of course there's many more action types that I have listed here like uh, uh, race cars and uh, biking events and things of that nature. Uh, keep in mind that um, some uh, lenses tend to be very expensive. The faster they get, you might consider a prime lens. A little difficult to manage with a fixed focal length, but um, certainly a, a viable option. Some camera settings that you're going to want to do is you're going to have to get off the creative modes and you're going to have to get off the green mode. You're going to have to go to a manual, aperture priority, or shutter priority. Uh, I know this is out of the comfort zone of some people, but there's really no option, uh, no way around that. Uh, when it comes to white balance, most cameras do good with automatic white balance, but you may have to uh, uh, go to um, uh, uh, some other type of setting if you need to. Uh, you might want to shoot in machine gun mode, a rapid succession. I, uh, I call it machine gun mode. Uh, it's up to you. Um, there's some pros and cons for that I'll cover in just a, uh, a few minutes here. If you have image stabilization or vibration reduction, turn that off. That is only good for still. Uh, the small little thumb uh, wheel that you see on the camera there, it's a diopter that helps uh, adjust the focus point of the viewfinder. So if yours is blurry, that's probably why. Uh, something about spot focusing, uh, typically cameras on green mode uh, will do um, an averaging method. So it'll pick uh, many things in the scene, try to average the uh, focus uh, point, and you don't know what you're going to get. I always shoot with spot metering or a spot focus here. I want that little girl's face in, in focus, so I make sure that I focus directly on that. So how do you set your camera up now? So if you're shooting with low lighting conditions, AV mode is probably where you're going to want to start. It seems counterintuitive to uh, sports photography, uh, but you're going to want to force the highest shutter speed, which you're generally never going to be able to get because of low light. You'll want to pick a lower um, aperture uh, and let the camera uh, get the highest um, shutter speed that it can. You're going to want to walk your aperture down and your ISO up until you can actually um, get the, uh, the, the right exposure in there. If you're shooting with something a little, um, little more light, that is, um, like uh, like outdoor, for instance, um, TV mode is probably where you want to start. Uh, set with a, a shutter speed uh, that is going to get your desired stop effects. This is something I can't tell you um, easily. You're going to have to experiment around with this. For instance, uh, a, a baseball player, you might want to have um, stop action around 500 to get the ball just slightly blurred, uh, but something fast like. Uh, like a race car event or something, you might want to crank your shutter speed up even higher. You're going to have to experiment around with that. Uh, pick a lowest ISO that you can. Uh, you're going to want to walk that up until you can get uh, a decent shutter speed and a decent um, depth of field. Some sample shots uh, for what I call machine gun mode. Maybe not an industry term, but uh, here I just uh, press the shutter down and let it do its... Uh, this is a Canon 20D, uh, three or frames a second or so. and. Uh, while it got that shot, I was very lucky to get this shot as well. Uh, most people think just hold the shutter down, take 20 shots in a row, and you're, you're bound to get one. That's all pure luck there. You're really going to want to learn how to time your shots. There's another one, pure luck, um, that I just held the shutter down, and uh, I got the football player stepping in bounds. Uh, if you want to guarantee results, you're going to have to learn how to time your shots, like the, uh, the joust uh, actually bending. If this were shot in rapid succession mode, I would have never gotten that. I just... I'm very good with timing things. You're going to have to learn how to do it as well.
Some sample shots for stop action styles. Most people think just take the shutter speed and crank it up as high as you can get and while that does work it tends to look a little freakish. The ball looks almost painted in that image and there's really no movement uh, by any kind of level of blur. Uh, this image here, um, uh, probably a little bit too much blur. You can see the hula hoop has got some nice um, action on it but the, uh, the subject is starting to blur a little bit as well. Uh, sweet spot somewhere in the middle. Um, again, I can't tell you. You're going to have to experiment around with it. The tires are nice and blurred. The background is a bit blurred. And the subject itself is in uh, a nice clear, clear view. So a little tip, uh, minimum shutter speed is going to be 1 divided by the focal length times the crop factor. So on something like a 200 millimeter lens, uh, you're going to need to set your minimum shutter speed. And that's just to counter effect, or, or counteract the handshake effects of about 1 over 320. So if you've got a uh, real low light condition and your uh, meter says I can only get uh, one to two hundredth of a second, you're not going to get very clear shots with a very long lens. So that's why uh, you're going to have to work with your ISO and some of your other camera settings to get something uh, uh, more appropriate. Here's some sample shots for depth of field. Uh, this is uh, one of my signature type of things that I like to do is have a lot of black background blur. The first example on the left, uh, you're really looking at the people sitting down in the spectators. It's very distracting. It's hard to, to see the, the, the baseball player uh, take a swing at that home run. While the one on the right, obviously it's got a lot of background blur and uh, draws your attention to the subject. Now I realize the background is much further away. It's naturally going to be blurred. But if you like that effect, you're going to have to get a, um, a wider aperture or a, a lower um, aperture value. F2.8, uh, F um, F4 is probably the minimum that you want to be. Some sample shots for ISO settings. Um, some people think that uh, low light crank the ISO all the way up. You don't want to do that. This probably doesn't come out very well, but this is a very grainy shot. It's a throwaway shot. It's uh, got a lot of noise in there. Uh, where something a lot clearer, ISO 200, um, you can really start to see the detail in the shot. So be careful when you start cranking your ISO up that uh, the higher it doesn't necessarily mean uh, better. So a couple tips on uh, where to stand. Uh, it really depends on the type of event that you're shooting. If you're shooting a fast moving uh, object like tennis or basketball or auto racing, find a good spot and stick with it. Move periodically to adjust for background or light conditions. Slow moving objects like football or swimming uh, move with the object but don't chase it around. Something like uh, football games for instance, I'll get myself five, ten yards ahead of the ball and I'll kind of walk with that line of scrimmage as it moves around. It's always great to see the quarterback uh, throwing the ball almost at you. Uh, look for places where uh, light illuminates uh, the subject very well, meaning get the sun at your back. Uh, look uh, for uh, at background obstacles uh, that might be um, kind of bad to see like uh, telephone poles and stuff like that. And make sure that uh, you're courteous and you're not in spectator's view and uh, are out of obviously the object's way. Don't go walking on the, the, the football field or anything like that. And make sure it's legal for the sport. Um, a place that I, uh, I like to go but you can't is behind the goal at a soccer game. It's really illegal to be back there. So just make sure you um, are abiding by the laws of the particular sport. This shot here, uh, I was at the, uh, I guess the net line. Uh, typically when people want to take pictures of their kids playing tennis, they want to side on their, the same side. Uh, you probably don't want to do that. Get on the opposite side. That way you can uh, look at their face when they're shooting it. If you're in a football game, uh, go right to the goal line. If it's the ball's getting close to it, it's a great way to catch that. If uh, taking a picture of a baseball game and the, uh, the pitcher is right-handed, line up on third base. If the pitcher is left-handed, line up on third base or first base. That way you can see their actual face. Opposite for the batter if they're left-handed, line up on third base. That way when they're taking a swing you can actually see their uh, facial expressions as they're swinging for the fence. Uh, if you're into concerts and stuff, action shots there. Uh, if you can get right up at the stage, right at the front, that's the best place to be. Or if you're at a, a play or a, a school dance or something, try to get as close as you can to try to you know catch as much action like the little boy taking the, his mask off at this particular event. Uh, when to shoot if you have a choice. Um, Probably the worst time to shoot is at midday. You've got the sun coming straight down and it gives us nasty, nasty shadows on the children's faces. A lot of times you just don't have a choice and that's when you're going to have to do it. These are mostly throwaway shots. Midday shot during a tennis match, the boy happened to look up, so at least I got some light on the face there. Uh, but as soon as he um, lowers his head, the, 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 the hat comes down, creates that shadow on the face. This is not bad, but definitely not optimal. 
Uh, outdoor um, events like uh, airplane shows and things of that nature. Uh, this was taken uh, around 5 o'clock, so I've got uh, a little bit of um, uh, dusk lighting, uh, if you will. Uh, and, and it's not optimal. Uh, these blue angels here, this took a lot of Photoshop editing to bring that into view because as such the, uh, the light was almost right overhead and almost ruined the shot. Uh, like I said, you don't have a choice over that, and sometimes you get what you get, and you try to work with it. And here, the light was so uh, hard in the background, um, I did a silhouette. Morning is the best time. Look at the uh, the lighting on the children's faces. There's no shadows. It's very well lit, and uh, creates a very nice bright uh, effect. Dusk is the other time when you get that really nice sun. Almost right before it goes down, uh, illuminates things very well and has a real nice color to it. Uh, again, uh, sun at dusk. This is right before the sun went down, right before the stands. You can see the shadow from the far uh, right hand or lower right hand. And it's a great way of illuminating all the children's faces. Uh, here, um, right when the sun goes down, you get this what I call a, a white box effect. There are no shadows. Very flat, very unappealing lighting, but it's not like you can stop the game and roll it back a few hours. Then into the night, you're at the mercy of the lights, and generally stadiums don't have very good lights, so you're going to have to have some really fast lenses for, uh, for shots like that. Uh, this is taken at 1600, ISO 1600 with a 2.8 lens, wide open. And uh, you know this is about the best you're going to get with uh, with that kind of equipment. When you're at professional events, it's a little bit different. The lighting is uh, better. Framing um, this is probably one of the more important aspects. I try to capture enough of the um, to put the thing in context to whether it's a soccer ball or a basketball or something. What a lot of people try to do is they'll get their 300 millimeter lens out there. They think they're going to dial on the mask of a of a of a sports um, player like their 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 face, their cheeks, their nose, their mouth. It, it just isn't. Uh, very realistic. You're going to have to uh, zoom back a little bit and frame the subject so you catch just the, the story that you want to tell. Here I was trying to convey the idea that I'm going up for that killer shot. I'm going to think it through and I'm going to see if I, uh, I, I, uh, I can make it. Other types of uh, uh, framing, um, you know, left hand side the basketball player uh, in context taking a free throw shot. Probably the next, not the best of framing, you know, uh, backboard would be nice to have in there. Little Boy was probably uh, one of my favorite shots. Uh, he's swinging for the fence. He can see it. Some people in the background. He's in full view. You really know what's going on here. Uh, this soccer uh, player here is actually another one of my favorite shots. Well, normally you would want to get, you know, the, the the facial expression of that, but him lining up for the shot, the goalie off in the background, uh, really uh, great. This is one of the times when uh, you um, fast moving sport remember don't chase the ball around plant yourself in one spot and uh, you're just gonna have to be wait uh, go wait for the shot and be very very patient with it same thing here I took this right behind home plate not my favorite place to be uh, you don't see anybody's facial expressions you see the this appears to be a second baseman out there trying to get that shot uh, the pitcher behind home plate much much better uh, point of view here He's lining up for his uh, winning strikeout. The batter's getting ready to, to clobber the ball, and the uh, shortstop is getting ready to field it. So that's a good framing shot there. You don't need a 300mm lens to get that. Uh, this, if I remember right, was taken with about a 100mm lens. So again, it's not like you need to get a long zoom lens and zoom way up. Get yourself in a position in the uh, in the stands or near the uh, the dugout. In this particular case, you can um, you know take advantage of of a shorter length, but uh, but a faster lens. Last but not least, don't forget to capture events outside the activity. Uh, the opening ceremony at a football game where people are crashing through a banner or uh, when they're flipping the coin to see who's going to, to kick off or receive or the flip of a coin at a soccer game. Uh, various other things uh, could, be, could be brought in. When a, a player is hurt or when they're taking a break or when the coach is cheering them on, perfect examples of that. Last but not least, uh, you're going to start taking pictures of people, and uh, people tend to not like their picture taken and published, so you might uh, run into some uh, resistance from parents that want to know what you're doing out there. Uh, have a good story. If you have a good reason to be there, that's all the better. And uh, if you're going to put that stuff in print anywhere, make sure you have a model agreement on everything that's included in that in terms of uh, uh, all the people that are involved. Uh, I hope you learned something, folks. Um, this is kind of a quick video here, but um, that's it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to comment.